Hi, I'm Nina Roberts. I'm here with Fardad Zabatian for the Business of Business. Fardad is the co-founder and CEO of Kudo, which is a multilingual interpretation platform. Fardad, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Kudo? Um, Fardad Zabatian, I'm the CEO and co-founder at Kudo. Kudo is a language as a service platform, which is a software as a service for uh, multilingual meetings uh, where we design a purpose-built platform to enable businesses to host multilingual meetings without any language barrier. Uh, it's a New York-based uh, company with, of course, uh, operations today and a headcount over 19 different countries and uh, uh, covering pretty much uh, from uh, Sydney, Australia, all the way to Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, and being able to support uh, our customers globally. Okay. And when you say 19 countries, is that just where you have employees or where you service clients? Uh, that's correct. That's where we have employees. Uh, we service uh, clients uh, across uh, 80 plus countries. Okay. If you could verbally explain how it works. So let's say I am a native um, French speaker and I, my English is not good enough to really do business and you only speak English, how would it work? Yes, so um, we, uh, so, uh, we uh, basically we have a meeting platform that participants will be able to join in with the link that is provided to them. At the same time, we have simultaneous interpreters, uh, conference interpreters who are uh, professionals, uh, been through uh, extensive training to be able to interpret into another language while listening uh, to the original uh, speakers. Um, we have built an, uh, a, a product called Marketplace, Interpreter Marketplace, where we have uh, 12,000 interpreters on our platform and uh, hosts and meeting uh, uh, planners can um, source interpreters, schedule, book, and bring them into Kudo meetings uh, with a few mouse clicks and providing the subject of the meeting, date and time. We cover today about um, 80 plus spoken languages and, uh, and sign languages on our uh, platform. Okay. Um, and so basically it's almost like uh, the UN assembly meetings when people have earpieces and they're getting the discussions that are happening on the floor in their ear. It's pretty much uh, a very good, uh, a very good uh, uh, comparison. We built a, a, a UN style um, conversation or uh, uh, basically experience in the cloud. Um, uh, without all the uh, uh, planning and infrastructure that needs to be in place. Uh -huh. so, uh, our goal and our, our mission is to um, make it very, very easy for users to be able to schedule, plan and host multilingual meetings and access to this very talented pool of interpreters independent from where they are and what language needs they have. Okay, and speaking of the UN, you have a history of working at the UN, correct? Uh, yes, uh, UN is a, a UN uh, headquarter is a, a project that brought me from California to New York about 11 years ago. I was very fortunate to be part of the team uh, who really designed and implemented technology at all the 20 conference rooms, including the General Assembly Hall and Security Council at the UNHQ in New York. And of course, uh, this is through my uh, 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 other business, uh, uh, the company that I started about 20 years ago. 
Okay, so you have an extensive history in translation and interpretation. Yes, and it goes really to my passion uh, uh, about how possibly I can make it easier for people to connect and communicate yeah. um, independent from where they are and what language they speak. Okay, and you're originally from Tehran, Iran? Yes. Okay. Yes, I was born in Tehran um, and lived there and pretty much uh, grew up uh, during all the good and bad, uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, stories of during the war. And, uh, uh, and uh, as a teenager, I was always listening to uh, radio and watching TV and it was all about Security Council, whether they pass a new resolution for the peace between Iran and Iraq or not. So um, at the end of the day, um, when I was able to do something in my professional life, um, I decided to uh, focus on this very big problem, which is uh, communication. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did you grow up speaking multiple languages or just Farsi or? Um, I, I grew up speaking Farsi and of course learning English, uh, going to, uh, you know, typical uh, language classes. Um, then I uh, traveled for the, my first business trip was uh, to, to Germany and I really struggled communicating uh, in English in this very small village that, uh, that uh, business was based at. Um, so I decided to learn German. Um, so when I went back, I was 22 years old and I went back, I started taking German classes about two hours a day for almost a year. And uh, my next trip uh, to Germany, I was able to speak German. I went to this uh, institute called Goethe Institute, which is a very German, a uh, very famous German uh, language institute. So when I moved to US uh, in my 20s, uh, late 20s, I was speaking German better than English. Of course, wow. now, now <laughs> here for a long time, uh, I yeah. need to really freshen up my German. I believe you initially started Kudo for the private sector. That was, uh, uh, it, it has been and it still is uh, an area of opportunity and expansion. Um, it's a new market. Uh, so there are two types of users for any product. <laughs> one that they're looking for convenience and one that is part of their uh, workflow, right? Uh, I, um, when we launched uh, Kudo, uh, this was uh, uh, end of 2018. And uh, basically 2019, most of our um, customers, very early adopters, they were uh, using Kudo for uh, town hall meetings, for large meetings that they have a, a community of audience that they are in different uh, locations and usually for short messages. Uh -huh. um, however, um, the, the solution for mostly established uh, institutions and organization um, it, it takes a bit uh, longer time for, for them to, to adopt to new, uh, new technology. And uh, of course, a uh, pandemic really pushed everybody to look at alternatives, to be able to have business continuity. And uh, we had a solution uh, that was ready um, and very much designed from ground up uh, ba based on their use case. So um, we went from um, uh, basically 30,000 minute usage to 30 million minute usage in, in about four weeks. And that- uh, oh, And when was that? What time period? March 1st to March 21st. <laughs> 2020. Yeah. Wow. Um, and uh, and uh, of course, uh, if a uh, pandemic was uh, maybe a year earlier, uh, we were not uh, ready to be able to accommodate such a surge in the usage. How um, did you, with, with this surge of interest that happened during the pandemic, 
how did you make sure that you were available, uh, that you were able to deliver what you promised you could when there was just such skyrocketing demand? I was not sure. So I, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I was learning as we uh, going through this experience. Uh, I think there were days that we had, I had maybe, um, well, the company had 250 incoming requests for a demo immediate demo of the product and think about uh, at a, a, we were a startup of 14 people um, and uh, and uh, 10 of us were basically engineers coders and so we really uh, didn't have the infrastructure to be able to respond to these many inquiries so we were just going through like most recent uh, requests and trying to respond to them you know yeah um, at the same time we as any other business um had to adopt with the new way of working you uh -huh. know families working from home not having not being in a lockdown and so um it was a quite uh, quite challenging and uh, really the team very small team, but a very uh, determined team. We basically start bringing help, new employees, new team members, and uh, think about also having limited resources to onboard uh, those those uh, those new uh, Kudo members. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, but we went uh, we went uh, quite successful uh, by almost uh, we had weak some some areas. I mean, still we have a lot of. Uh, New hires, but we, we we had an average like a uh, ten to twenty people starting every month. So think about like every Monday there is a new email coming in. These are the five new members joining the company and getting them computers, getting them access, getting them set up with all the restrictions on the whole supply uh, chain, right? Um, sourcing laptops, sourcing so. That, that of course became a lot better in 2021, but in 2020, it was a quite a struggle. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, okay, and so you started with 14 employees around that time, and then now you have, is it around 120, or how many employees do you have? We are about 180 today. Oh, 180, wow. Mm -hmm. So you are really expanding. Um, Okay, and so your clients today, what what percentage would you say are private sector or let's say NGOs or think tanks, governments? Um, what sort of what's the breakdown, if you happen to know it, of your clients? So uh, we're about 50 50 uh, today. Um, and uh, when we look at our uh, Q4 of 2021, Q3 and Q4 of 2021, we sign up more uh, enterprise logos than government logos. And uh, it's a whole new use case uh, for uh, the private sector, for the businesses. And it's all about really um, kind of a over, overall like a four buckets of different applications. And these are could be um, training, uh, product training, um, uh, town hall meetings, uh, uh, this is mainly for internal uh, applications. Then you have the, the whole um, uh, customer success, which is about training customers, selling to customers, uh, communicating to customers and partners. Um, this is another use case. Um, so um, because the product today with our marketplace is uh, is a lot, uh, uh, a lot more similar to a kind of an end-to-end -end experience. So once you have an account, you can schedule, bring the interpreter, host the meeting, access to the recording, all of that. Plus, you know, all the uh, AI assist to prep the interpreter, as well as uh, closed captioning, um, uh, being able to provide uh, uh, the, the, the reports at the end of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, these these are going to be the assets available for the customer to be used uh, post live meeting. Uh, so it becomes a lot of uh, uh, new use cases for customers. How do you ensure privacy to your clients? Because I'm sure if you're talking about legal matters, 
board meetings, uh, obviously politics, diplomacy. How do you ensure from a technical standpoint that you know nothing can get hacked or also uh, even the interpreters or who's listening? How do you ensure privacy? So the um, great question, and you know, privacy is 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 uh, there is uh, there is a it's a process. So it's a process that it's a continuous effort, uh, especially when you uh, or when you're referring to um, uh, online meetings. So we uh, one of the great investment that we did at very early stage we built our uh, uh, infosec uh, department. Start from the department of one, and of course now it's expanded, uh, where uh, we have uh, a lot of initiatives and compliances on on Kudo uh, that is really focusing around privacy. So, from you know uh, uh, SOC two, SOC one, uh, uh, FedRAMP, uh, ISO. Uh, so we have different certification, different processes that. Uh, we uh, have to follow with auditors and doing a lot of penetration tests mm -hmm. to be able to provide a platform that is uh, fully secure. Um, some of our customers, even they have their own um, uh, basically uh, private uh, cloud uh, uh, that they host the meetings and dedicated encryption keys. Um, uh, we um, have uh, different servers. We have servers in the US, servers in Europe. We have also servers in Asia as well, uh, where uh, uh, meetings could happen in those servers, depending on the client's credential and mm -hmm. based on the compliance that are uh, for that specific region. Um, then we have also servers for specific uh, government entities that uh, that is designed for, let's say, U.S. government, French government. So these are the servers that are dedicated for them based on the compliances that need for that specific customers. Okay. In regards to interpreters, interpreters, um, we have uh, uh, basically our Kudo certified interpreters that they go through the process of becoming a Kudo certified. Uh, which is more uh, an online process of getting familiar with the platform, having the right setup if they're working from home offices. Then we have Kudo Pro interpreters. These are Kudo Pro interpreters are the ones that are available on our uh, uh, Kudo marketplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we go through a, a series of verification as well. All interpreters are bound by confidentiality. This is for them uh, basically uh, a business uh, one-on-one um, and uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, basically process in place as well for them to, uh, to, to, to go through this process. So when a customer book a meeting, you already, they already have a confidentiality agreement uh, from mm -hmm. the on, on the platform. Moving on to financing. So I think you got a series A of 21 million in March of this year. And that was led by Felices Ventures. And you had previously received a, raised a seed round. Um, what were those experiences like? I think you had more, you received more capital than you initially sought. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. So, um... In uh, 2000, uh, before pandemic, of course, you as a as a as a as an entrepreneur, as a business, uh, uh, as a founder, you go on a road trip to meet investors and uh, and pitch your idea, uh, your your dream, you know, and uh, be able to get financing and commitment from them. Of course, this significantly changed <laughs> during pandemic, so. Um, um, I, the first time that I did uh, the external, uh, bring external capital to seed round, uh, we wanted to initially raise 2 million and we ended up raising 6 million and uh, I didn't meet anybody in person. So everything was over video call, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. video calls, and of course, to all, um, uh, uh, electronic, you know, wire transfer, signing, everything. And uh, 
I think I met uh, uh, our, our, our lead investor, Felix Nikki, maybe six months after in a trip mm-hmm. to San Francisco. Um, and then for Series A, the same. Um, what I wanted to say is um, just when you think about it, you can start a business, you can raise capital, you can do everything uh, all online. But one thing, if you don't have a uh, clear communication when it comes to language, right? So this uh, possibility, I'm not sure if it was easy for somebody, let's say a a company based in uh, Chile or Brazil to be able to raise capital from a US uh, VC if Mm -hmm. uh, they had the same challenges. Okay, and then you mentioned something about helping with NATO parliamentary assembly. Uh, what is, if you're able to talk about it, what is, uh, how are you, how's Kudo working in that environment? NATO has been using our product, our platform for their, uh, their some of their meetings uh, that they need language uh, support. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, NATO uh, has been a part of uh, the news headline in the recent uh, uh, months and uh, we see of course uh, kudo has at, at the center of diplomacy being able to uh, 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 enable clear communication mm-hmm. uh, amongst uh, different stakeholders um, and uh, and to me when i see uh, our, our our platform being used uh, uh, for for finding ways for diplomacy uh, is is always uh, uh, such a such a rewarding uh, uh, moment. What kind of growth has Kudo experienced uh, since either the the launch in 2018 or the beginning of the pandemic? However, you want to uh, quantify. We've been, we've been doubling our, our revenue every year. Um, we've been um, going from uh, uh, the as far as a uh, number of uh, logos number of customers we also doubling up our logos as well uh, in regards to um, uh, product of course we're growing our product portfolio there are actually a couple of very exciting product that's that's going to come on come out this year um, our marketplace that we launched uh, in april of last year yeah I think- our- if you could explain just the difference between regular Kudo and Kudo Marketplace. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's all called Kudo. Okay. <laughs> so it's Kudo platform that uh, we host the meetings. Then we have Kudo Marketplace, which is a B2B business to business managed marketplace for, mm-hmm. uh, for users to be able to schedule, uh, well, source, schedule book and pay for professional conference interpreters um, and bring them into kudo meetings of course we launched uh, a few new products that connect and integrates our marketplace to other meeting platforms Mm -hmm. such as zoom or microsoft teams and there are more that are uh, uh, that are on the way Uh, what uh, what marketplace which is standalone product what does is uh, really um, um, basically uh, removing all those friction points of um, uh, how do i find uh, let's say a korean interpreter that i need for my monday morning meeting at 9 a.m that i want to be able to uh, have a meeting with a potential korean manufacturing uh, talking about um, uh, medical devices, right? So mm-hmm. how do I, f- where do I start, right? Uh, and when I find that uh, interpreter, how do I engage with that interpreter? Mm-hmm. What are the terms and conditions? And how do I pay this interpreter, right? What's your bank account? Can you send me an invoice? And so on and so forth. So we remove all of these friction points and make it very easy uh, for somebody who needs a Korean interpreter to be able to book it for tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, and have that interpreter ready, making sure the interpreter is uh, familiar or 
getting the time to be familiar with the, all the terminology and grocery of the, the meeting. Uh, that interpreter has a confidentiality in place. That interpreter knows, uh, uh, sorry, has the right setup with the right uh, connectivity, mm -hmm. right headset, to, to sound great in the meeting. Yeah. All of that, we, we take care of that. This product uh, uh, has been a, a very successful product for us since the launch of April of last year, got uh, uh, recognized by Time Magazine as the top 100 innovation of the year. And as far as revenue is uh, representing uh, about half of our current revenue in okay. addition to the platform. So we see this product to really um, uh, 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 grow even faster and further. But uh, we basically doubling up our revenue every year, and uh, and uh, and as far as uh, meetings and number of customers, we're growing also doubling up our our, our uh, growth as well. Okay, and do you actively market Kudo, or because there's nothing really like it out there is it just word of mouth people tell each other about kudo or do you have a very strong marketing department uh, our marketing department yes they're very strong uh there were a, a, a one no, two people marketing uh, team now they've grown to 15 and there's a lot more uh, to grow uh uh, we have uh, an active uh, uh, marketing campaigns as well, but of course uh, um, it takes time. It takes time, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, happy with the uh, product market fit that uh, we have at Kudo and being able to customers experience this and be able to. Uh, uh, refer and talk about it and go back to their own uh, organizations and mm -hmm. talk about the meeting that they attended and they had a great experience. Yeah. Okay. And I was, how many languages does Kudo offer again? Because I was surprised that there were so many sign languages as well. Yeah. So I think we have about 147 um, sign language as in our drop down menu. Um, yes, yeah, sign languages, uh, let's say uh, English, for example, uh, the American sign language is different from British sign language. So, um, and how does that work when you have sign language interpretation? Is there an extra window in? Yes, there's an extra window that's going to pop up as soon as you select the sign language. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would be able to see the sign language interpreter. Uh, uh, and you can pin that video or uh, maximize that video, be able to follow the, the conversation through the sign. Is there anything else that you wanted to add about uh, Kudo's growth? Uh, we're just at the beginning. Uh, we have uh, 40 open positions today at Kudo. And oh my God. Uh, we're really looking for talented people who are very passionate about our mission, which is uh, connecting, uh, connecting the world, connecting the businesses. Right? Um, okay, I think that's it. I know after this ends, I'm going to think, oh, I should have asked him this, but um, <laughs> but this is great for uh, now. And it's just amazing because we did speak sort of in the beginning of the pandemic, so to, to hear what's happened since, it's uh, really incredible. Thank you, Nina. Yeah. Thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate that. Okay, great. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for watching and check out the Business of Business YouTube channel for more interviews like this.